Hey, welcome back guys. As I film this today, it's been less than a week since Hurricane Helene slammed into the southeast of the United States. And my heart goes out to those neighbors that are just a few hours away in North Carolina, still dealing with the aftermath. But it got me to thinking once again about my family communications plan. I wanted to spend just a few minutes today talking about that. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So it's been a few years since I covered this topic and I thought it was high time we did it again. Because what if you and your spouse were at work when something like Helene slammed into your area? knocking out your traditional communication so you don't have internet and you don't have a cell phone. How will the two of you reconnect? Or if you've got kids, how are you going to reconnect with those kids? And that's something that I've thought about for years and years now and have kind of come up with a plan that I wanted to share with you guys and hopefully you can find something to take away from this. Maybe you don't copy my plan, but maybe it just get you pointed in the right direction. Feel free to copy my plan if you want to, uh, but modify it so that it fits your particular needs. We no longer have children at home, so that kind of simplified our uh, communications plan for family uh, w once the kids were grown and gone. That's one less thing we have to be responsible for uh, nowadays. So what I've done, and mine is, uh, I, I call it a family communications plan. That might actually be the wrong term for it. Maybe it's more of a reunification plan because the first thing on my list, and guys, I do have cards printed off like this that are in every single vehicle we own. It's in multiple bags. But the first thing it is, is just different meeting places. The first one on the list is obviously home because if I can get back to here, that's where I want to be. That's where I have the majority of my tools at my disposal to be able to deal with some sort of crisis. But, uh, and, and it does tell you on the note, uh, you're gonna go to the first place on the list if possible. If not, we're gonna go ahead and move to the next place. And the next place is a friend's house that's only about 10 minutes away from here. In Middle Tennessee, really the largest threat that we deal with is going to be a tornado. And even if my home was destroyed, it's more than likely uh, going to be perfect to meet at his house just 10 minutes away. Uh, seldom will those two areas both see an impact. But what if we are looking at something like major flooding in the area? Well, I've got a couple of more meeting locations on this. The next one on the list is the cabin that's about 30 minutes away in an adjacent town. And finally, the last one on the list is my wife's brother's house, which is about an hour and a half south of here. So as you can see, we progressively get further and further from home in those meeting locations, um, just trying to get us more and more away from the impacted area. Now diving into the actual communications portion of this, we're going to start with cell phones. Um, now I know you're gonna be thinking, well, maybe we shouldn't start with cell phones because if we have something that came through uh, like Helene that took out cell towers and whatnot, that's probably not going to be available. And you are absolutely right about that. However, I do start with cell phones so that people will try those first, me and my wife. And if that doesn't work, we can move down the list to the next part of the plan. Now, one of the things I have done is I have created these little metal cards. And on the back of those is phone numbers for family friends, neighbors. So I keep all of those listed on these cards and these are in every one of the kits around all of the vehicles. There's one of these that stays here at the house. And the whole reason behind that is if you lost your phone or if your cell phone was dead, but you found a, another means uh, to dial a phone number, maybe you borrow a phone, maybe you go to an old school pay phone, if you can still find any of those anywhere, 
uh, you would still have a list of numbers. So uh, I don't want you to be dependent upon that contact list that's in your phone that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis because that might not be available when you need it the most. Now, continuing with cell phones, back to the list at hand, there are specific directions on here as to how to deal with the cell phone. So, uh, part of my plan says to monitor the phone at the top of every hour for 10 minutes. Uh, for me to call my wife or for her to call me, and then at, after 10 minutes, I want you to go ahead and put the phone in airplane mode. Now, one thing we do though, before we put that phone in airplane mode, is we do attempt to get a text message out if that phone call doesn't go through. Uh, the cool thing about text messages is if you can get it out, even if the other party doesn't have their cell phone on at that particular moment, uh, assuming the cell towers are working and the network is functioning as it should, when the other party turns their phone on, they're going to receive that text message. But the primary reason I want you to keep that phone in airplane mode is to conserve battery because if you don't have a cell signal, it really zaps the battery on that phone much quicker than if it does have a cell service. Anytime the phone is searching for that cell signal, it's consuming more battery. So by keeping those phones in airplane mode, except for that 10 minute window each uh, at the top of each hour, we're doing everything we can to conserve that battery. Now, finally, let's talk about radio. My wife is not a licensed ham operator. However, a couple of years ago, I did go ahead and purchase a GMRS license. Now, originally, when I first built this communications plan and I put everything in place, I was using a Balfang radio uh, in her vehicle. Since then, I have upgraded to the Yaesu FT60. I did have to Mars mod this radio so that it would have the capability in an emergency to be able to transmit on both the FRS and the GMRS frequencies. And I went with this radio for a few reasons, but primarily it is just a much better radio than those Balfangs. Uh, and I trust this one. I mean, let's think about it. You're literally maybe trusting your life to a radio. Do you really want to be doing that with a Balfang? And I just couldn't honestly answer that as yes. So I did upgrade to a fairly good quality radio. The other thing that I like about this particular radio is I can get the battery packs for it that will take AA batteries. And this particular radio will run at full five watts when we're running on those batteries. So I do have instructions on the sheet as exactly which repeaters, GMRS repeaters, we're going to try to utilize to contact one another depending on which area uh, you happen to be in. So occasionally my wife is traveling to visit the uh, kids and grandkids. So if she's in that area, it's going to be a different repeater than if she's just across town from me. So that's something you'll need to think through if you don't uh, already have a GMRS license and your spouse or your kids are not hams, I would highly encourage you to purchase that GMRS license. It's only 35 bucks and go read through the FCC's uh, rules on that because it covers a wide a variety of family members. Uh, it will cover your kids, it will cover your spouse, it co covers brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents. I mean, it is really wide. Uh, it's a very wide definition of exactly which family members they cover. I think it's worth the 35 bucks and a few minutes of jumping through the FCC website hoops to get that license to give you radio, assuming there is GMRS repeaters in your area, it's really going to expand your range. Even without those repeaters, it does give you some simplex capabilities. So I hope you're able to take something away from this, and I hope this kind of gets the gear spinning in your head. If you don't already have a family communications plan to start building one of those today. I would have never thought that a hurricane would have impacted uh, eastern Tennessee and North Carolina well inland from the coast the way it has. So you never really know when this might 
come in super handy. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.